The Lamentations of Jeremiah in the King James Version Bible. Lamentations, Chapter 1. How doth the city sit solitary that was full of people? How is she become as a widow? She that was great among the nations and princes among the provinces, how is she become tributary? She weeps sore in the night, and her tears are on her cheeks. Among all her lovers she had none to comfort her. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her, they are become her enemies. Judah is gone into captivity because of affliction, and because of great servitude she dwelleth among the heathen. She findeth no rest, all her persecutors overtook her between the state straits. The ways of Zion do mourn, because none come to the solemn feast, all her gates are desolate, her priests sigh, her virgins are afflicted, and she is in bitterness. Her adversaries are the chief, her enemies prosper, for mighty God a high had afflicted her for the multitude of her transgressions. Her children are gone into captivity because the enemy, or before the enemy. And from the daughter of Zion all her beauty is departed. Her princes are become like hearts that find no pasture, and they are gone without strength before the pursuer. Jerusalem remembered in the days of her affliction and of her miseries all her pleasant things that she had in the days of old, when her people fell into the hand of the enemy, and none did help her. The adversaries saw her and did mock at her Sabbaths. Jerusalem had grievously sinned, therefore she is removed. All that honored her despise her, because they have seen her nakedness. Yeah, she sighed and turned backward. Her filthiness is in her skirts. She remembered not her last den. Therefore she came down wonderfully. She had no comforter. Oh, Ahia, behold my affliction, for the enemy had magnified himself. The adversary had spread out his hand upon all her pleasant things, for she had seen that the heathen entered into her sanctuary, whom thou didst command that they should not enter into thy congregation. All her people sigh, they seek bread, they have given their pleasant things for meat to relieve the soul. See, O Ahia, and consider, for I am become vile. Is it nothing to you, all you that pass by? Behold, and see, if there be any sorrow like unto my sorrow, which is done unto me, wherewith mighty God Ahia had afflicted me in the day of his fierce anger. From above had he sent fire into my bones, and it prevailed against them. He had spread a net for my feet, he had turned me back, he had made me desolate and faint all the day. The yoke of my transgressions is bound by his hand, they are wreathed and come up upon my neck. He had made my strength to fail, to fall. Ahia had delivered me into their hands, from whom I am not able to arise up. Ahia had trodden underfoot all my mighty men in the midst of me. He had called an assembly against me to crush my young men. Ahia had trodden the virgin, the daughter of Judah, as in the winepress. For these things I weep, mine eyes, my eye, run it down with water, because a comforter that would relieve my soul is far from me. My children are desolate, because the enemy prevailed. Zion spread it forth her hands, and there is none to comfort her. Ahia had a commanded concerning Jacob that his adversary should be round about him. Jerusalem is as a menstruous woman among them. Mighty God Ahia is righteous, for I have rebelled against his commandment. Here I pray you, all people, and behold my sorrow. My virgins and my young men are gone into captivity. I called for my lovers, but they deceived me. My priests and mine elders gave up the ghost in the city while they sought their meat to relieve their souls. Behold, O mighty God Ahia, for I am in distress. My bowels are troubled, mine heart is turned within me. For I have grievously rebelled abroad, the sword bereaved, and home there is as death. They have heard that I sigh, there is none to comfort me. All my enemies have heard of my troubles, they are glad that thou hast done it. Thou wilt bring the day that thou 
that's called, and they shall be like unto me. Let all their wickedness come before thee, and do unto them as thou hast done unto me, for all my transgressions for my size and many, and my heart is faint. Chapter 2 How had mighty God Ahiah covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger, and cast down from heaven unto the earth the beauty of Israel, and remember not his footstool in the day of his anger? Ahiah had swallowed up all the inhabitants of Jacob, and had not pitied he had thrown down in his wrath the strongholds of the daughter of Judah, and had brought them down to the ground. He had polluted the kingdom of the princes thereof. He had cut off in his fierce anger all the horn of Israel. He had drawn back his right hand from before the enemy, and he burned against Jacob like a flaming fire, which devoured round about. He had been his bow like an enemy. He stood with his right hand as an adversary. He slew all that were pleasant to the eye in the tabernacle of the daughter of Zion, who he poured out his fury like fire. Mighty God Ahai was an enemy. He had swallowed up Israel. He had swallowed up all her palaces. He had destroyed his strongholds. He had increased in the daughter of Judah mourning and lamentation. And he had violently taken away his tabernacle as if it were of a garden. He had destroyed his places of the assembly. Ahiah had caused a solemn feast and Sabbaths to be forgotten in Zion, and had despised in the indignation of his anger the king and the priest. Ahiah had cut off his altar, he had abhorred his sanctuary, he had given up into the hand of the enemy the walls of her palaces. They have made a noise in the house of mighty God Ahiah as in the day of a solemn feast. Ahiah had purposed to destroy the wall of the daughter of Zion. He had stretched out a line. He had not withdrawn his hand from destroying. Therefore, he made the rampart and the wall to lament. They languished together. Her gates were sunk into the ground. He had destroyed and broken her bars. Her kings and her princes are among the Gentiles. The law is no more. Her prophets also find no vision from mighty God Ahia. The elders of the daughter of Zion sit upon the ground and keep silence. They have cast up dust upon their heads. They have girded themselves with sackcloth. The virgins of Jerusalem hang down their heads to the ground. Mine eyes do fill with tears. My bowels are troubled. My liver is poured upon the earth for the destruction of the daughter of my people because the children of the suckling swoon in the streets of the city. They say to their mothers, Where is corn and wine? When they swoon as the wounded in the streets of the city, when their soul was poured out into their mother's bosom. What thing shall I take to witness for thee? What thing shall I liken to thee, O daughter of Jerusalem? What shall I equal to thee, that I might comfort thee, O virgin daughter of Zion? For thy breach is great like the sea, who can heal thee? Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee, and they have not discovered thine iniquity, to turn away thy captivity, but have seen for thee false burdens and causes of banishment. All that pass by clap their hands at thee, they hiss and wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem, saying, Is this the city that men call the perfection and of beauty, the joy of the whole earth? All thine enemies have opened their mouth against thee, they hiss and gnash the teeth, they say, We have swallowed her up. Certainly, this is that day that we looked for. We have found, we have seen it. I had done that which he had devised. He had fulfilled his word that he had commanded in the days of old. He had thrown down and had not pitied, and he had caused thine enemy to rejoice over thee. He had set up the horn of thine adversaries. Their heart cried unto thee, O Ahiah, O wall of the daughter of Zion, that tears run down like a river day and night. Give thyself no rest. Let not the apple of thine eye cease. Arise, cry out in the night, in the beginning of the watchers. Pour out thine heart like water before the face of mighty God Ahia. Lift up thine hands toward him for the, thy life of thy young children that faint for hunger in the top of every street. Behold, the mighty God Ahia, and consider to whom thou hast done this. Shall the women eat their fruit and children of a span long? Shall the priest and the prophet be slain in the sanctuary of Ahiah? 
The young and the old lie on the ground in the street. My virgins and my young men are fallen by the sword. Thou hast slain them in the day of thine anger. Thou hast killed and not pitied. Thou hast called as in a solemn day my terrors round about, so that in the day of the mighty God Ahia's anger none escaped nor remained. Those that I have swaddled and brought up had mine enemy consumed. Chapter 3 I am the man that had seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. He had led me and brought me into darkness, but not into light. Surely against me as he turned, he turned his hand against me all the day. My flesh and my skin had he made old. He had broken my bones. He had built against me and compassed me with gall and travail. He has set me, to, set me in dark places as they that be dead of old. He had hedged me about that I cannot get out. He had made my chain heavy. Also when I cry and shout, he shutted out my prayer. He had enclosed my ways with hewn stone. He had made my paths crooked. He was unto me as a bear lying in wait, and as a lion in secret places. He had turned aside my ways and pulled me in pieces. He had made me desolate. He had bent his bow and set me as a mark for the arrow. He has caused the arrows of his quiver to enter into my reins. I was a derision to all my people and their song all the day. He had filled me with bitterness. He had made me drunken with wormwood. He had also broken my teeth with gravel stones. He had covered me with ashes. And thou hast removed my soul far off from peace. I forgot prosperity. And I said, My strength and my hope is perished from mighty God Ahia. Remembering my affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall. My soul had them still in remembrance and is humbled in me this i recall to mind therefore have i hoped it is of mighty god of highest mercies that we are not consumed because his compassion fail not they are new every morning great is thy faithfulness mighty god of high is my portion said my soul therefore will i hope in him higher my mighty god is good unto them that wait for him to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of a high, our mighty God. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. He sit it alone and keep it silence because he had borne it upon him. He put it his mouth in the dust, it so be there may be hope. He give it his cheek to him that smitted him, he is filled full with reproach. For mighty God Ahia will not cast off forever. But though he cause grief, yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. For he does not afflict willingly, nor grieve the children of men, to crush under his feet all the prisoners of the earth, to turn aside the right of a man before the face of the Most High, to subvert a man in his cause. Mighty God Ahia approve it not. Who is he that said, and it cometh to pass, when is mighty God Ahia commanded it not? Out of the mouth of the Most High proceeded not evil and good? Wherefore doth a living man complain, a man for the punishment of his sins? Let us search and try our ways, and turn again to mighty God Ahia. Let us lift up our heart and our hands unto mighty God Ahia in the heavens. We have transgressed and rebelled, thou hast not pardoned. Thou hast covered with anger and persecuted us. Thou hast slain and thou hast not pitied. Thou hast covered thyself with a cloud that our prayer should not pass through. Thou hast made us as the offscoring and refused in the midst of the people. All our enemies have opened their mouths against us. Fear and a snare is come upon us. Desolation and destruction. Mine eye run it down with rivers of water for the destruction of the daughter of my people. Mine eye trickled down and ceased it not without any intermission. Till mighty God Ahia looked down and behold from heaven, mine eye affected my heart because of all the daughters of my city. Mine enemies chased me sore like a bird without cause. They have cut off my life in the dungeons and cast a stone upon me. 
Waters flowed over my head. Then I said, I am cut off. I called upon the name of Ahiah out of the low dungeon. Thou hast heard my voice, hid not thine ear at my breathing, at my cry. Thou drewest near in the day that I called upon thee. Thou saidest, Fear not. O Ahiah, thou hast pleaded the cause of my soul. Thou hast redeemed my life. O mighty God Ahiah, thou hast seen my wrong. Judge thou my cause. Thou hast seen all their vengeance and all their imaginations against me. Thou hast heard their reproach, O mighty God Ahiah, and all their imaginations against me. The lips of those that arose up against me and their device against me all the day. Behold, their sitting down and their rising up, I am their music. Render unto them a recompense, O mighty God Ahiah, according to the work of their hands. Give them sorrow of heart, they, thy curse unto them. Persecute and destroy them in anger from under the heavens, O mighty God, Ahiah. Chapter 4 How is the gold become dim? How is the most fine gold changed? The stones of the sanctuary are poured out in the top of every street. The precious sons of Zion, comparable to fine gold, how are they esteemed as earthen pitchers, the work of the hands of the potter? Even the sea monsters draw up the breast. They give suck to their young ones. The daughter of my people has become cruel, like the ostriches in the wilderness. The tongue of the sucking child cleaveth to the roof of his mouth for thirst. The young children ask bread, and an old man breaketh it into them. They that did feed delicately, del delicately or desolate in the streets, they that were brought up in the scarlet embraced dung hills. For the punishment of the iniquity of the daughter of my people is greater than the punishment of the sins of Sodom that was overthrown as in the moment, and no hand stayed on her. Her Nazarites were purer than snow. They were whiter than milk. They were more ruddy in body than rubies. Their polishing was as sapphire. Their visages blacker than a coal. They were not known in the streets. Their skin cleaved to their bones. It is wither. It is become like a stick. They that be slain with the sword are better than they that be slain with hunger. For these pine away, stricken through for want of the fruit of the field. The hands of the pitiful women have sodden their own children. They were their meat in the destruction of the daughter of my people. Mighty God Ahiah had accomplished his fury. He had poured out his fierce anger and had kindled a fire in Zion. And it had devoured the foundations thereof. The kings of the earth and all the inhabitants of the world would not have believed that the adversary of the enemy should have entered into the gates of Jerusalem. For the sins of her prophets and the iniquities of her priests, they have shed the blood of the just in the midst of her. They have wandered as blind men in the streets. They have polluted themselves with blood, so that men could not touch their garments. They cried unto them, Depart ye, it is unclean. Depart, depart, touch not. When they fled away and wandered, wandered they said among the heathen, They shall no more sojourn there. The anger of mighty God Ahai had divided them. He will no more regard them. They respected not the persons of the priests. They favored not the elders. As for us, our eyes as yet fail for our vain help. In our watching we have watched for a nation that could not save us. They hunt our steps. They would that we cannot go in our streets. Our end is near, our days are fulfilled, for our end is come. Our persecutors are swifter than the eagles of the heaven. They pursue us upon the mountains, they laid wait for us in the wilderness. The breath of our nostrils, the anointed of mighty God Ahia, was taken in their pits, of whom we said, Under his shadow we shall live among the heathen. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwellest in the land of us. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken, and shalt make thyself naked. The punishment of thine iniquities is accomplished. O daughter of Zion, he will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. Chapter 5 Remember, O Ahiah, what is come upon us. Consider and behold our reproach. 
Our inheritance is turned to strangers, our houses to aliens. We are orphans and fatherless, our mothers are as widows. We have drunken our water for money, our wood is sold unto us. Our necks are under persecution, we labor and have no rest. We have given the hand to the Egyptians and to the Assyrians to be satisfied with bread. Our fathers have sinned and are not, and we have borne their iniquities. Servants have ruled over us, there is none that doth deliver us out of their hand. We get our bread with the peril of our lives because of the sword of the wilderness. Our skin was black like an oven because of the terrible famine. They ravished the women in Zion and the maids in the cities of Judah. Princes are hanged up by their hand. The faces of the elders were not honored. They took the young men to grind, and the children fell under the wood. The elders have ceased from the gate, the young men from their music. The joy of our heart is ceased, our dance is turned into mourning. The crown is fallen from our head, woe unto us that we have sinned. For this our heart is faint, for these things our eyes are dim. Because of the mountain of Zion, which is desolate, the foxes walk upon it. Thou, O mighty God of highest, remain this forever, thy throne from generation to generation. Wherefore, dost thou forget us forever, and forsake us so long time? Turn thou us unto thee, O mighty God of highest, and we shall be turned, renew our days as of old. For thou hast utterly rejected us, thou art very wroth with us. And that's the end of Lamentation.